Good morning. Welcome to Emmanuel Christian Reformed Church live stream service on this beautiful, sunny Sunday. Thank you for joining us. We come together now to worship the Lord in the season of Easter to remember that he is risen from the dead and that he's also ascended, ascended to the Father. So let's come together now with this call and worship, this call and response call of worship. Come, see, and hear the wonders of God. The blind, the blind receive their sight, the lame, lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news preached to them. What is this kingdom the Messiah has brought, where God eats with the lowly, the outcast, and sinners? This is the promise of the old the good, good news, news of salvation, salvation and the, the love, love we trust, trust in, the trust, truth. the truth we hold to. Bring hallelujah to the Savior who is seeking more exiles for God. Hallelujah. May we find our home with this God of new creation. Yes, hallelujah. So let's bring that hallelujah, bury it in our hearts so that it may grow and produce more hallelujah. Let's come together now for a prayer of adoration, asking the Lord to rain down grace on us so that we may sprout praise to him. So let's take a time of prayer. Let's pray. O Lord, hallelujah. And may that hallelujah come from the very being of our heart, the very center. May it reverberate throughout our bodies, our minds, our actions, and this hour, our time of praise and worship. O oh Lord, hallelujah. You are good. You are awesome. You are mighty. And O oh Lord, you can be so confusing, yet you are so kind. We, O oh Lord, are lowly, humans created from the dust, and yet you wish to eat with us. You call us to the banquet, the heavenly banquet. O oh Lord, may we be amazed and awe at your love. And may, O oh Lord, we also mimic that love out into creation. O oh Lord, hallelujah. Praise be to our gracious, loving God. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. And so let's come together now to sing praises to that God who calls us out of the dust to the banquet. Let's sing together songs of praise. Let us sing. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness, O oh God. You wrestle with the sinner's restless heart. You lead us by still waters into mercy. And nothing can keep us apart. So remember your people, remember your children, remember your promise, O oh God. Your grace is enough, your grace is enough, your grace is enough for me your love and justice great is your love and justice god you use the weak to lead the strong you lead us in the song of your salvation
enough and consequences that we may still suffer because of sin here are not a sign of a lack of grace God promises to carry our burden and walk with us no matter what we are struggling with praise him in this storm and try to see these things as an opportunity to bring glory to God and others to him this is amazing grace stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder the king of glory the king above all kings this is amazing grace has done great things for us, amazing things. 
And one of the ways that we respond of that greatness is prayer. Prayer is that spiritual communication, that dialogue, that listening that we do with the Lord in trying to appreciate all that the Lord has done. And so prayer is the subject of our learning of our faith, where we read from a catechism to learn deeper of those things that we trust in. So please hear the question and then respond. Hear the question. Why should we pray? We pray because we are God's children, and prayer is one way to express our thankfulness towards and dependence upon our Heavenly Father, both of which He requires of us. God promises to hear our prayers and to respond to them in accordance to His will. And so hear this about prayer, about communication with God, taken from Psalm 62. Hear this and plant it in your heart. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Yes, God is our refuge. We trust in God, that he will protect us, that he will guide us, that he will be our sanctuary. And so trusting in that, we come to the Lord seeking forgiveness, revealing our sins, our faults, our mistakes, our weaknesses, admitting that we are made from dust and not perfect, and asking the Lord to do wonders in our lives, to lift this dust and throw it among the stars of heaven. And so let's come together now for our prayers of confession and intercession, letting go of our sins and claiming the glory of God. So let's say it together. Uh, This is a call and response. So, let's begin. O Great One, forgive us for our sins and our lack of love. Forgive Forgive us us for building building high walls to keep keep others others out. Forgive Forgive us us for not going going into the world world you made, made, bringing your wonders to those in need. We claim to be grafted to you, O Christ, yet we do not bear fruit worthy of you. We do not love as you do. Shake us awake. Scandalize us. Show us what you want us to be. Form our hearts anew. And may we be able, and may we be a table for the outcasts and sinners, where they can find rest, hope, love, and most of all, you. May the church be a table of love and truth. May it be a house of prayer for all people. A house of prayer of all people. So let's take a time of silent prayer, being that house of prayer, a moment of silent prayer. And now, as a people, as a house of prayer, guided by Christ, let's come together to recite that prayer that Jesus taught us, to recite the Lord's Prayer together. It goes. Our Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, come, thy thy will be done done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now hear these words of grace, these words taken from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 9. Hear them and please respond. As Jesus reclined at the table, behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and were reclining with him. When the Pharisees saw this, they said, Why does the teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick, go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice, for I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. Oh, how wonderful our God is that he's calling us, 
calling us to new life and to be healed. And so let's respond with songs of renewal, knowing that the Lord does heal us and forgive us. Let us sing together. Let us sing. love is unfailing and that's something to give thanks for and so now we come to a time of thanksgiving a time as a community we join our hearts to praise the lord to thank him and we also give our thanks not just through prayer but by our actions by our listening ear by our caring hearts and by our offerings we emmanuel are a community pulling together our resources and so please know that you can come to the church on a weekday. We have offering boxes where you can put your offering and say a prayer. Or if you're tech savvy, you can give through an e-transfer. So please go to the church website to learn how you can give through an e-transfer. And be aware that you, on the check, you should put Emmanuel Christian Reformed Church, not ICRC. Emmanuel Christian Reformed Church helps the bank understand where this money's coming from. But now, let's take a time of a prayer of thanksgiving. Let's pray. O ascended king, O resurrected one, O one who promises gifts unfolding and a spirit ever living, we thank you, O Lord. We thank you for this day with its beautiful sunlight. We thank you, Lord, for our family and our friends. We thank you, Lord, for the heartbeat in our chest. And we thank you, Lord, for the offering of a place at the banquet of your table. Thank you, O Lord. May we gladly accept and be ever grateful. And may we call other people because your promise is so huge. Your offer is so big. You want the world to come once more at your table and rejoice. Thank you, O Lord, for these wonderful things. May other people hear this good news and joy and join in the thanksgiving. Praise be to you, O Lord. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now we come to a time of community. So welcome to Emmanuel Christian Reformed Church. If you've just jumped in, thank you for joining us. 
We are a community who still come together, even if it's not in this space, but we come together online. We still call each other, text each other, try to make sure everyone's well. And so right now I want to take that time to give everyone in our community and others the peace of Christ. So please, in the room, especially if there are people in the room, they exist too, not just the 2D screen, please turn to those in the room and pass them the peace of Christ. Then pick up your phone or email or shout across the street and give someone else the peace of Christ. So let's take time to pass the peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. And with the peace of Christ passed along, we now come to a time of announcements. And um, you can always check out the announcements on our website. We do have our bulletin, so you can always see the announcements at the back if you ever forget. Uh, some that I want to highlight. One that's, um, uh, I have two big ones right now. Uh, we have a daycare here in the church on weekdays. They uh, are upstairs in a upstairs rooms where they have classes learning math and science and art and just a bunch of fun and they right now are having openings they have some openings to enroll so they wanted us to advertise saying hey if you have a three to five year old child that wants to learn a little bit more get ready for school please think of the daycare here in the church and enroll so please contact the church or uh, Miss Karen who runs the daycare and she will and will get you connected to it because there will soon be a lot more slots by the time September comes. And another thing that I want to mention, this is really big news. Um, uh, 2020 has been a rough year. We've lost our English pastor, uh, our assistant Mandarin pastor, our Mandarin pastor, and children's pastor. And so for the past year and a half, we've been trying to find new pastors to take over those roles. And we found one of these pastors. We have a new assistant Mandarin pastor, a new assistant Mandarin pastor, so please pray and give welcome to our uh, new assistant pastor, Pastor Hong Ying. Um, she, uh, I believe, was inducted this morning in the Mandarin service. Uh, I'll be posting on Facebook a photo of her so you'll know what she looks like when we finally come together and you can give her a proper welcome. So please keep in prayer of our new pastor. Pray that her ministry will be fruitful and wonderful. And so with those things shared, we now come to a time of message with our message being shared with our guest preacher, Pastor Peter. So, let's enjoy this time of message. Thank you. Let me take this off as we get started. Adjust this. Am I good with the mic? Great, thank you. Well, let us begin with the word of God here. Today's passage is from Luke 7. There you go. The disciples of John reported all these things to him. And John, calling two of his disciples to him, sends them to the Lord, saying, Are you the one who is to come? Or shall we look for another? And when the men had come to him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you, saying, Are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? In that hour, he healed many people of diseases and plagues and evil spirits. And on many who were blind, he bestowed sight. And he answered them, Go and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, the poor have good news preached to them. And blessed is the one who is not offended by me. When John's messengers had gone, Jesus began to speak to the crowds Concerning John, what did he go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? A man dressed in soft clothing? Well, behold, those who are dressed in splendid clothing and live in luxury are in king's courts. 
what then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you. And more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. And I tell you, among those born of women, none is greater than John. Yet, the one who is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. When all the people heard this, and the tax collectors too, they declared God just, having been baptized with the baptism of John. But the Pharisees and the lawyers rejected the purpose of God for themselves, not having been baptized by him. And to what then shall I compare the people of the generation? And what are they like? They are like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another. We play the flutes for you, and you do not dance. We sang a dirge, and you did not weep. For John the Baptist has come eating no bread and drinking no wine, and you say he has a demon. And the Son of Man has come eating and drinking, and you say, look at him, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is justified by all her children. The word of the Lord. Indeed. Uh, as we begin, I just thought maybe we'll start off with a report also. Uh, after all, last week I did ask for your prayers regarding the celebration feast that uh, on my site we wanted to do with our neighbors who come for food hampers. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, some do come, uh, uh, about three families, uh, different backgrounds, uh, some from the Muslim tradition indeed, uh, celebrating Eid with us. We have learned some would have come if we hosted it the day after. So that's one of the learnings, because you know the day is too important for them to celebrate with us at first. I'm like, okay, that makes sense. They will do that next time. Uh, but thank you. Uh, we ask for your prayers too to continue for these families and neighbors who come, yes, for a need that is food, but really a greater need that is Jesus Christ. So with that, let us pray as well, even right now. Heavenly Father, we Learn about, about prayer today. And, and we do come and pray. As we hear this word, we thank you for uh, the things that has happened this last week, the learnings that have occurred. We ask you to help us continue to learn today. From this text, uh, as we come back to Luke, Holy Spirit, enlighten this and change us so that we can live accordingly. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Today we come back to the book of Luke, uh, the Gospel, chapter 7, after that little uh, fast forward to the book of Acts. When we come to the person of John the Baptist here in this passage, now, if I recall correctly, um, as this series started, that's how we all began, right? Uh, the John uh, the Baptist is, is a character that just came up right from the first chapter, and, and we, we see him here. Uh, we also saw him uh, and I remember preaching on this, is uh, in Luke 3. Well, he wasn't as mentioned um, in Luke specifically. It was just saying that he was baptizing, and then, and then it would say, oh, Jesus was baptized. He didn't make that connection like the other gospel did, but, but you know, we've we seen him around in the early chapters of Luke. And today we come to him. This is um, not necessarily his last time showing up yet, uh, but no spoilers. Um, but this is one of the defining moments as well, I think. So we will learn from him today. Uh, and, and this is the context as well, right? Uh, did I say Mark here? Oh, my typo. Um, Jesus, right before this, raised a widow's son. And then the word goes out, right? This is two weeks ago. A prophet has arisen among us, and God has visited his people. So this, all this going on being said at this time. And John's disciple caught wind of some of these uh, rumors or, or just uh, news. And came a report, just like I reported to you uh, earlier. But John's disciples came and reported these things to him. And, and at this time, by the way, uh, John was put in prison, uh, or, or at least to a large degree, stripped of his freedom. 
the way that he used to have when he was baptizing people in the Jordan River. So anywho, um, so instead of you know, going out and doing this inquiry by himself, he in this case sent out disciples after hearing this report. And then it is in this exchange that we are going to hear about today and also Jesus' comments about John uh, and that is going to be our learning. And I would say John the Baptist does the following for us today. He reminds us that in our witnessing that the content is Jesus Christ, the challenge is his high cost, and the call is faithful commitment. I just put the C words up there, but I'll say it again. John the Baptist from our text today, and, and really his life too, we've been reminded of that, our witnessing the content is Jesus Christ. The challenge is in his high cost, and then the call is to faithful commitment. So let us dive in. The content being Jesus Christ. Um, well, so for some of you, maybe, oh, this is obvious. That's, that's what we're doing, right? Like, yeah, the, we're, we're witnessing. We're, we're being his witness, right? We talked about this even last week. It is true. But in our day and age today, uh, in our world, um, that may not be so obvious sometimes, after all. Uh, and, and I'll just say it, like, it's coming from an organization that sometimes is more well-known of being a thrift store. Uh, that can be, um, you know, people may have missed the point. Well, don't get me wrong, I, I think where I come from uh, in our work, and you've seen what we were trying to do, yes, we're providing food, but at the same time, it is about Jesus. Like, we're not there to say, bam, like, go to hell. Like, that's, that's not what we, we, we're there to do. But we try and we want to make sure at the end of the day, we incorporate the content that is Jesus Christ and, and some of the focus we see here in the text. So there is this whole long desire of someone to come. Um, maybe uh, for those of you who know, Christ also means Messiah, which is the anointed one that is coming uh, that will be saving Israel. It's kind of like last week we would talk about, hey, uh, are you going to restore the kingdom of Israel now? Well, they got the point wrong, but um, that someone is coming. And, and John here is wondering, Jesus, are you the guy? Uh, and, and, and this is in the context of many things going on, right? And, and this is where you can get confusing as well, like mixing up with all the social good that you may see, because after all, you see people being healed of diseases, plagues, and evil spirits, that, that's spiritual, uh, and, and, and blind people coming to sight. Like, those things can, can be great and all happening as Jesus is around, but guess what? The coming one, the one that is being expected, and that one that needs to be witnessed is Jesus himself. So in the next passage here is, well, Jesus said, yeah, all these things are happening. Go and tell John these things, yes, happening, are signs to the fact that the one who is to come has come. And, and that's Jesus Christ. And, and Jesus even tagged it in the, in the end. It's like, blessed is the one who is not offended by me. And, and I think this is important to, for us as a reminder. Is, is Jesus Christ that we are witnessing at the end of the day, sometimes it became ourselves who became this object of this witnessing. And what do I mean by that? I'm talking about in a day and age where self-promotion, sometimes even shameless pluck, as we would call it, is, is the norm. But what are we witnessing? I think at the end of the day, is this Jesus Christ? I cannot stress enough that, yes, it is important that we ourselves have relationship of other people, and, and I think that is a sign of how witnessing uh, should look like, because at the end of the day, we're calling people into relationship with Jesus Christ. But in our relation with the other, are we doing it in, with the expense of Jesus Christ being the object of our witness? 
Again, Jesus is inviting people into relationship. Don't get me wrong. But in that relationship, who he is is a very important fact that we cannot miss out. So I, I'm beating like this, this to the death, but I, I just want to really come, make that come across. So, uh, so let's go into maybe m the media part of this passage. Okay? Because in here, there's a bit more. And, and that's with the has to do with the challenge, the high cost. Because if you make Jesus the main thing, and you will experience this too, uh, well, sooner rather than later, is there is indeed a cost when we witness Jesus Christ. Uh, and and how, how that pans out really depends on the person. But in this case, let's look at how John have experienced it himself. So we go back to that passage that we're looking at, and uh, we have incorporated some of that in, in our literature today around a, a passage of all these great things happening, which is long foretold, and, and, and that is from the Old Testament, and, and actually came out in Luke 4 uh, as well, and Jesus uh, quoted those, and then now this is happening around the corner. But, but, so all these are happening, and Jesus even tell John's disciples to go back and to tell John, look at this, this is happening. But for those of you who have a good memory, you might be thinking something is missing. Any thoughts? Well, this is it. I'm just quoting uh, chapter 4 here. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. We had that. He sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives, recovering the sight to the blind. We have that. And set liberty those who are oppressed. You could say party is this evil spirit, but those words, though, liberty, in this case, especially for the captives, Jesus did not tell John's disciple to bring it back to John. What does that mean? Well, earlier I mentioned, where is John at this current point in time in the Gospel of Luke? So Jesus, by omitting liberty to the captives, Jesus was announcing something to John is yes the kingdom is here and the one that has been long expected has come but there is a cost in the midst of this and for your case John captives being liberated yourself included is not yet. And, and note, is not yet. I, I want to say, at the end of the day, I think John has been liberated. But in his lifetime here on earth, this might not have been the case. I'll refrain to say more because that will turn into spoilers. Now, that is one of the aspects to this high cost. In this case, is his liberty, his freedom, being jailed. But there's other aspect to John's high cost in being a witness to the kingdom of God, the Messiah who is to come. Jesus started commenting on the ministry of John, which is, I would say, quite amazing and, and successful in a lot of ways. And there's a lot of distinctives. And so Jesus started mentioning some of this. And maybe I'm looking at a modern person lens um, I, I'm going to name that, but some of these things, I do think, even if you applied it, it's Jesus' time, it is a cost that John took on to do what he was tasked to do. Uh, I'm highlighting that particular word here, in the wilderness. Well, maybe you can think of him going camping or go to a cabin or something. Well, I, I don't think that is the case. I think John, in this case, is actually heading to a more remote place 
a place that is outside of the busyness of the city, uh, but over there, baptizing people uh, and preaching to them, saying, come and repent. This is the cause that he has taken on. And, and you look at um, some of the diets that he has taken on, you will see that in earlier books of Luke. And the clothing as well, as you can see here, that's not what he was wearing. Uh, and then another aspect to the cause that John the Baptist has taken on is, is this rejection that he has experienced. Um, John the Baptist, yes, he is somewhat well received by certain demographic of people. And, and part of that is, I think, what God wanted to do through him. People like text collectors that we see in this text, they come and learn about yeah, what God is expecting. And they repent, repented. And, and soldiers, too. Uh, it wasn't mentioned in this text today, but earlier in the book of Luke, we see John proclaiming someone is coming, so get ready. But at the same time, there are those who rejected him. In fact, those who seem to have had it all together and, and perhaps um, those who have this religious power or the seeming prestige in, in this case, sometimes these Pharisees that we see in today's passage, they become the ones who rejected, yes, John and his message, but more so here, as you can see in this particular verse, it says the Pharisees, the lawyers, they rejected God's purpose for themselves. So yes, it is on one end, the rejection of John himself, and, and I think most of us, who have experienced some form of rejection in life, maybe it's an interview, maybe it's a date, maybe, you know, all kinds of various things. It's not easy. It takes a toll on you, and that's part of that cost as well. Now, I also want to say, ultimately, that too. It's not just about John but also about Jesus. Because rejecting John is one thing, but rejecting Jesus is another thing. Uh, in our text, you, you do see the people who come to reject John, he say, oh yeah, he doesn't eat oh, much, uh, and he has a demon. That's pretty demonizing. I, I, I don't know you had that experience, but being called out in this way is, is not very pleasant. I can, I can tell you that personally. Uh, but then comes Jesus also being rejected in the next verse. And, and it goes as, when the Son of Man came, they would say he is a drunkard. He is a glutton. So I want to bring up this point as well. And again, back to Jesus. Yes, maybe we get rejected. And that's on us, perhaps. But at the same time, more than often, people might actually be rejecting Jesus. Now, what do I want to say? Is it worth it if people reject you because of Jesus? I think so. But is it worth it if people reject Jesus because of you? Let's make sure we're not doing that. So um, I wrap up this point, which is, Yes, again, it's about Jesus Christ. The cost is high if it's because of Jesus that we are rejected. But let's make sure also in our witnessing, we do not make it the other way around. Like sometimes I say this, and this may be an illustration. Jesus calls you to be salt of the world, right? So do that, but do not be salty. Like being salty is not a very good trait, and it turns people off. So, so don't do that. Maybe that punches it better. Now, Lastly, is the call. Like, is it worth it? And what do we do about what we are learning here, both in terms of the contents and the cost? And, and there is a call, a call for us to respond to in faithful commitment. And so this goal builds on how Jesus commented on John the Baptist himself. 
Behold, I send my messenger before your face and will prepare your way before you. This is from Old Testament and, and from long ago, this has been foretold that someone uh, in the spirit of Elijah, if, if I were to be specific, um, will, will come and prepare the way for Jesus. And, and Jesus is here now and to declare this is what John's role was or designed to be and he has performed this. He has through his ministry in the Jordan River proclaiming a baptism of repentance. Note that is a baptism of, uh, of John. Sometimes it got contrasted with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We talked about, about that uh, last week. But John has done his part. It's not the complete, like Jesus is coming to finish the job and the Holy Spirit, as we have learned last week, that comes and get it done further. By the way, next week is Pentecost, so it's going to be great. Now, my point is, John did his part. And I think that has demonstrated a strong level of faithfulness that I think Jesus is commenting here. He would even go and say, I tell you, among those born of women, none is greater than John. Now, there's a next verse that may seem make it more, more contradicting, but it is still high praise. None is greater than John. So Jesus, in a lot of ways, is describing all those who have come before him, right? Literally, everyone was born of woman, um, well, except for Adam and, 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 and Eve, and, and all have come a long way before God through Jesus Christ and to the world. Even that is through a woman. And, and Jesus, in this situation, gives this praise greater than John. None is. So, is it worth it, that high cost? Because witnessing for Jesus may lead to rejection and all these kind of other things? Maybe. I think it is. And I want to bring us back together here. The content, the challenge, the call. Jesus Christ, high cost, faithful commitment. It backs the question, are you or am I rejecting God's purpose? Because in our culture today, a cost, a high cost, may not be the most popular option, or is commitment, or the name Jesus. But if God's purpose for us is this, then what are we doing about this? And I don't say this to make us feel guilty about what we are doing or how we are being alive in Jesus Christ. Rather, I want you to get the sense that we need help. We need help from God. The bad news is, yeah, we are set up for maybe failure, and John is a very hard person to measure up against. But guess what? The good news is, yeah, John is great. Not perfect, though. He doubted, to be honest, didn't he? He was wondering, are we supposed to wait for someone else? Well, because partly he was still in prison, right? Nor are we. Like, chances are we are not going to be greater than John. But Christ is. Jesus is. And he even said, right, the least of the kingdom of God is greater than he, he being John. And so it is possible, I think, as we enter into this kingdom, that somehow, even though we might or may not be, it's good at John, like this is um, subject to maybe your perspective, but it is true that we are not perfect, but through this kingdom of God that we can become part of through Jesus Christ, there is a turnaround for us. So that's the verse. And I do want to say, the tax collectors whom John has really served, they too, being 
kind of like the lowest tier of spiritual persons during that time, they too can enter into this kingdom. Yes, through John first, but ultimately you see it uh, through Jesus Christ and, and, and the Apostle Matthew being a prime example. And this is literally what Jesus did. The Son of Man came eating and drinking. Well, they say he's a glutton and drunkard, a friend of tax collector and sinners. Well, you know what? That's demonizing kind of wording. But Jesus said, well, that is true. Even the tax collector and sinner, I am your friend. So to wrap up, I want to call us into action to respond to what Jesus was saying and the life that John the Baptist has lived for us to see. Well, now we're not done with him yet, but allow me. The contents we proclaim and we witness to is Jesus Christ. The challenge is that high cost. The call is that faithful commitment. And so my call to action to you today is first, consider the call. Are you called to do this? And I would think it is. For some of you, this may mean a certain commitment that you're going to make, specific to yourself, secret to you even. But consider that call. For some of you, it may mean, yes, the call is there, and I know it is. Well, guess what? Your next step is to count that cost. Because I think it will be unwise. I want to say stupid, but to jump in and not realizing the cost of it all. But the wise thing to do is count the cost and still rely on God's help to move forward. And really, ultimately, I want to say too, and for some of you, maybe what you have to consider too today is to come to Christ himself through entering this kingdom of God by believing in him. That is where we all started. Without that, it's not going to lead to anything, really. So let us pray in light of this, to receive him, to confess this cause that we are observing, and to respond to his call today. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your words. We thank you for Jesus Christ and also John who prepared his way and the life that he lived that challenges us today. God, for some of us, we want to respond to let Jesus Christ take us into the kingdom. And for some of us, yes, Sinners, well, maybe tax collectors, or the equivalent, be our friend. And that we may also welcome others who might be in those circumstances. That we may not reject them because you don't reject them either. God, help us to count the cost and respond to your call. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God is the one who makes a way for us, works miracles keeps his promises and defeats darkness with his light. He made a way and used his children to prepare the way for each of us to know Jesus. And he makes the way with our commitment to our call to let Christ be known to others just like others have done for us before.
moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are a way maker. And you are a way maker. Miracle worker. Promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. You are a way maker. Miracle worker. Promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. You are here. You are here. Touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. Healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You're here turning lives around. You are here turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. You are here mending every heart. I worship you. I worship you. because that is who you are it makes us what we are today even though we are unworthy you hid us under the lamp of God thank you Lord for who you are you keep your promise you open ways for us may the grace of Christ who calls each and every one of us May his grace be with you. May the love of God, the one who help us to count and meet the cost, be with you and I. May the Holy Spirit work within your heart and mine that we may follow the Christ. Blessings are pronounced this day in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Yes, please be seated. At this time, our worship service ends here, but do spend some moments in quiet reflection, and then we'll see you next week.
God bless all of you.